twist. Got to start moving the joints here. Big hip motion, big circle. And switch direction. Then just make a big circle with your body. This is the grunt and groan in motion. If you just woke up. Ah. And back the other way. Okay, and hug yourself. Okay, and hands on your hips. Squats here. And then make loops with your legs. Just make a bring your knee and bring it in and out, outward to end. Make a big circle. Inward to out. Big circle. Okay, one more time for the twist. Okay, basic stuff. Front kick. And all your kicks, there's a couple parts. That's from the start when it comes off the ground. That's when it starts. It's footwork to get to the kick. That's the beginning of the kick. The kick has a full set of things that are moments and I want to make sure you come, keep those in mind. For almost all kicks, this is the same. It starts with your inaction of the body to get the kick to go. The second is the chamber position of the kick. The third is the extension of the kick. The fourth is the re-chamber or retracting of the kick. And then fifth, finally putting it down on the ground. Back to where you were so you're on the ground to move. So just be aware that the kick doesn't finish there. It finishes when you get back to the ground and you can move again or prepare another kick. And uh, consecutive kicking is something that I really wanted to work out today. I thought I was going to push people on consecutive kicks, but we'll do a couple of those too. Why not? So uh, front snap kick. Uh, basic part of front snap kick. We'll start with the leg back. We put our right leg back, hands up, we bring our knee up. It's very important that you emphasize your knee raise. Even when you're kicking the heavy bag, you really focus on your chamber, which is that first or the second part. You know, the first part is the prep of the kick. The second part is the chamber. If you get it right there, you really focus on raising your knee. You really kick higher. You have more power. You have more options to kick different kicks from the chamber position. So focus on bringing your knee up. One up, one, and then extend. Extend the ball of foot on a front snap kick is the, is the tool. So I'm trying to hit with that. i got to pull my toes back. And I gotta have my foot extended. And that is very difficult to do, as you know. Most people go like this with their foot toes up. You gotta put your foot like you're standing on the ball of your foot, your knee up, extend, back, and then place it to the rear this time just because I wanna work on that hip motion. So our hands are up, we're gonna do front snap kicks five each side. One, and that's a snapping motion. Knee up, out, back, and down, okay? Two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now you notice my hands are up while I'm doing this kick. I'm going to switch to the other side. Okay. Left leg, hands are up. One, make sure that knee comes up first. Okay, knee up. The higher your knee, the more height you can have on your kick. Ana, dul, sit, mid, gossip, gossip, you go, you go, aho, yo. This is a kick that you should practice on the heavy bag, Siobhan. 
you know, you want to make sure that you try this because if you don't feel comfortable, you got to put a shoe on first sometimes. That may make you feel more comfortable. But uh, try to get your foot position right and try to work on this kick on the heavy bag too. All right, so front snap kick. We also have a front pushing kick. It's the exact same kick. The only difference is that we're going to move forward with our body instead of putting it back. And we're going to, uh, instead of snapping the motion out like that, snapping out and back like that, we're going to push it through and use our hips, push the kick in. So try that again. One, leave your leg forward and then step back. Okay. Two. Okay. So we're putting our hips and our mass behind the kick. Three. And we're not having to snap it because we're pushing. Four. We switch. Ana. Two. Now this one is easier to perform on the heavy bag. Sit. Knit. Because you kind of place your foot on the bag and push with the ball of your foot. Dasa. And so you don't worry about your toes getting twisted or smashed when you kick with snap kick. You do the snap kick, you do it so quickly that there's a possibility that your toes get curled under, like on the hit the bag, because your angle of your leg is you go like this. When you hit the bag, it's a vertical surface, and those toes go crunch, and that sucks. So <laughs> you hurt your toes, and then you don't do front snap kick on the back anymore. So try the push kick, and then slowly work that push kick to add your hip into your snap. So when you're doing a front snap kick, yeah, you get that hip motion into it. So it's not just your leg. And when you do that hip motion, your trajectory of the kick, instead of being like uh, like that to the, to the vertical surface, you know, when you roll your toes over, it's more like this. So even though it's coming up, it's in as well. And then when you do that, you can kick the heavy bag. This is why I talk about the heavy bag really changing the way you kick properly. Because now you're using your hips, all right? So we're doing this front snap kick now with hip motion for power. Go. One. And then leave it forward. That's okay. Two. Then leave it forward and switch the other leg back. Set. Net. Dasa. Yasa. Here go. Yo go. I hope. Yo, couple more, huh? Two, sit, knit. All right, so right leg back, let's do turning kick. The turning kick as I teach it traditionally is with ball of the foot. So the target is here at my 45 facing me. And I'm going to kick into that target. So if this is the surface that I'm kicking, this line here on the cabinet is what I'm trying to hit. I'm going to be at 45 to that surface, and I kick through the ball of foot to the surface. So the turning kick with ball of foot is very similar in terms of the motion of my knee joint. The difference is my toes are back and my foot is back. So now I've turned that horizontal. There's that front snap kick motion with my knee joint. It's the same. Okay, except for my toe, my foot position, horizontal. And I come slightly up and downward, as we talked about a little earlier today, Siobhan, at that driving, kind of driving down into my target. This is another kick with ball of foot that we don't practice on the heavy bag very often because we worry about our toes getting hurt. So if you start doing this at an angle, find your right angle and push your foot through the target. Start with that pushing motion and then slowly work up to your speed and snapping motion with the hip. And this kick will be effective. The ball of foot turning kick is harder to do than the instep turning kick. And so we don't practice it. You know, if you practice it on the bag and you can figure out how to use it, it's very effective for sparring because it gets around their guard. You know, that foot can curl around, whereas your instep hit the arm hit the knee, hit the forearm and bounce off. The ball of the foot hooks around that and can get to the ribs or the, or the solar plexus, you know, around their guard. I can't tell you how many times in sparring, in competition, 
And I was able to land a ball of foot turning kick on a guy while we were sparring and change the game because it hit him on those floating ribs or the solar plexus. And he was like, oh, it knocked the wind out of him. Whereas I kicked him harder with an instep, nothing happened. It's just so much surface area. So try this on the heavy bag as well. The ball foot turning kick. And we'll do a couple. Right leg back. On it. Mr. Curry, you don't practice this very often. And you're not very good at it. So since you're working on it, you can try. And then I often tell beginners this is that cleaning the table thing. So we're cleaning the table. Now, this is a turning kick in ITF Taekwondo. This is not a roundhouse kick. This is not a side turning kick. Okay, a side turning kick is to the side. Let's try our left leg. A couple on the dumb side, do that one. Turning kick, ball of foot. Just try the motion. Remember this, that cleaning the table. It's the front kick motion of my knee joint, only horizontal. Same motion, but it's horizontal. Now for power, I'm gonna drive my legs through, drive my hips through with the kick. On the ball of foot turning kick, it's slightly different hip rotation than a uh, side turning kick when we're kicking the heavy bag. In fact, I will often push with my standing leg this kick. So as I'm doing the extension horizontally with my turning kick ball foot, I'm also pushing off my standing leg. And that's how I do this kick when I'm breaking boards. In the ITF, when we're breaking boards with turning kick at the World Championships, we gotta use ball of the foot turning kick. We don't get to use instep. Wouldn't want to use instep on four of those white boards anyway. So uh, ball foot is the way to do it. And when you learn how to do this kick, it's a huge, huge, uh, huge positive. Now that we've done that, let's do the side turning kick from the rear leg. This is one of the most common kicks. Everyone calls it roundhouse. WT calls it that. Um, turning kick, Dolia Chucky. We're gonna do side turning kick is Yuck Dolia Chucky. And we're gonna do this with our instep as our tool. So we're gonna point the foot. You can do side turning kick with the ball of your foot. And I have done it in competition. You can do it. And it can get around the target, you can get around their guard. But on the instep is the, the kick that everybody does, the kick on the back, the side turning kick. It's not at the 45, it's all the way around to the side. Your standing foot pivots at a 30 degree angle or sometimes all the way. People really extend. They'll pivot at 180 to the line of their kick on the side turning kick. So let's try rear leg. And uh, this is uh, the motion. It goes here and extend. When I do the turning kick, I bring my knee up straight, just like a front snap kick. And then I turn my hip over as I'm extending the lower leg. So it's simultaneous rotation of the hip with that extension. That motion is happening at the same time. And that means my standing leg cannot be fully set. I cannot rotate my hips and extend my leg, my kicking leg, without that standing foot pivoting. It has to pivot on the ball of the foot. So when I'm kicking the heavy bag and I'm going as hard as I can with my instep turning feet, that heel is swinging around on the ball of my foot on my standing foot. It's coming all the way around. So I'm really trying to drive. And my hips, uh, my leg raise, because I don't want to do, uh, even though we've done the traditional turning kick, we brought our leg up high and we're kicking like we're lifting our, lifting our leg up. On the side turning kick, we're bringing it up straight and coming across the body. Okay? So from a rear leg, we just do that a couple times. One, put it down, step back, and I'm going to try our dumb side. Two, put it down and step back. Three, put it down and step back. Four. Yasin. Five. Yasin. Look up. Yodo. Aho. Yo. All right. So now we're going to put these together. We 
We're going to put our front snap kick and our turning kick and a consecutive kick together. Our right leg is back. We're going to do front snap kick, turning kick, side turning kick. That is all the way around. So good, my hips around. Look like this. And a little trick to doing this quickly is that we chamber the front snap kick. We put it out there. We re-chamber into our turning kick position so it's more horizontal. So it goes out, re-chamber here, and then extend there. So I'm kind of combining the re-chamber into the chamber portion of the turning kick. We put a consecutive kick together. Looks like this. Okay, something like that. Okay, so let's try right leg. Ana. Step back, do. Remember your foot position changes from ball foot to instep. Set. Net. Hard to do on the bag with power. Dasa. Another side. Ana. Do. Set. Net. And dasa. So the advantage of putting these two kicks together is one is coming linear and the other one is coming circular. And generally you can break up your kicks into circular kicks and linear kicks. Front snap kick is a linear kick. One line. Turning kick is a circular motion to the target. Okay, it comes from an angle. Circles in. So, we are turning a linear technique into a circular technique, and that is really effective for striking. Because you don't, your opponent has a hard time. They can deal with linear one way, but with circular, they have to deal another way. And so, you add that variety in a consecutive kick. Those are effective consecutive kicks. They're effective for sparring, they're effective for self defense. They can be even to the body, low body. Boom, boom, right? Knee shot, solar plexus. Knee shot, floating rib, etc. Okay. Knee shot, groin. <laughs> for example. Okay. So now, uh, side kick. One of the hardest kicks to do. We're just going to go over this one real quick because you can spend the next two years doing side kick and you still not have it right. We want to start from here from the bending ready and extend the kick out. I want to start from the bending ready stance like that because this is a traditional way of throwing the kick. It emphasizes your hip rotation with the kick. Again, the hip rotation is simultaneous. There are checking kicks, cut kick, pressing kick. There's a variety of kicks off this side which don't incorporate the hip rotation. And the hip rotation is what gives the massive power to the side piercing kick and is the hardest part to do. So if we start here with our bending ready, we have to force our hips to rotate to do the kick correctly. And that'll force that, again, standing foot has to pivot. Ball, the ball of the foot is the pivoting point, and my heel has to come forward on my standing leg as I do the kick. I'm here, has to pivot to rotate my hips correct. So let's just try from bending ready a couple of uh, uh, side piercing kicks to the side. And just to clarify on the bending ready, I've uh, Guarding block, middle inner form guarding block. My knee is off at the angle. Okay. My uh, standing foot is uh, 90 to my, to my facing. Okay. Standing foot is 90 to my facing. Stop right there. Standing foot's going that way. And this one's at 40, my knee is at a 45. My hands are up guarding block. Side kick. All right, let's try that a couple times, both sides. Right, left, bending ready, right leg kicking. Ana. Two. Set. So again, hip rotation is simultaneous with the extension of the kick. Net. Yasa. Yasa. OK, 
Okay, other side. Right bending ready stance. On. Good. Set. Net. Okay, now, just a little bit of thing to think about on the side piercing kick. If I start in bending ready, it's like a front snap kick chamber. Okay? It's like a turning kick chamber horizontal. The vertical. When I do the kick, as I push my leg out, I'm still doing that motion. The difference is that I'm also using the glute and the hamstring to drive. And what that does is it exposes the heel from the foot sword to that stamping motion. And I'm driving with this part of my musculature on my leg, the glute and the uh, <coughs> Hamstring and quad, not just my quad. We're combining all those together. So let's do a side kick. I'm bending ready. You have to bring it here and then drive out. You can't just flick the leg out. So if we're here and bending ready, I can't just go. Because then I'm just doing a turning kick. It's not going to have that uh, linear attack. And side piercing kick is a linear. Uh, you've heard me talk about loading the gun, pointing the loaded barrel, the lower leg. Those are all breaking the kick down into parts. But for advanced level people, you don't do this. Okay? This is not correct. Side piercing kick is fluid. Okay? It's all rotating at the same time. And when you're kicking the heavy bag, try to throw the side piercing kick from your bending ready. Try to throw the side piercing kick from your lead leg by drawing back. Try that a couple times and uh, work on that linear motion without it having be it been just the you know the quads moving the lower part of the leg. All right, so a little consecutive kick front. These are the basic kicks of Taekwondo. We're going to go into some more advanced here just now for the next second half here. We have front kick, side kick, turning kick, side turning kick. Okay. So let's do all of those, each leg, uh, with the right leg back. We'll go front to D, side to A, turning to A, D, side turning to D. All right, let's try that. Right leg back, go. One, two, three, four. Good, go. One, two, three, four. And you'll notice each time I'm doing this kick, I'm changing my foot position. Ball of foot, side piercing, turning ball of foot, side turning kick, in step, point my toes. So my foot position is doing some, some movement to expose the right attacking tool. If you don't expose the right attacking tool, technique is not good, okay? So be aware of that, double more. One. And left leg, go, front, turning, side turning, go, front snap, side, front snap, side, turning, side turning, and go, front snap, side, side turning, very good. Okay, that's a consecutive kick, but you can do that consecutive kick all to D, for example. Front, side, side turning with ball of foot, uh, side turning, uh, turning kick with ball of foot and turning kick with uh, instep. So both of those turning kicks are gonna be side if you go to D. So let's do them, we'll do them both with different foot position. So one, two, three, four. And you can work your way up the ladder. Front kicks low, side kick middle, ball of foot turning kicks to the solar plexus, in step turning kick, head, okay? right leg, go. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And one more time. 
Dog. Ana. Tu. Set. Net. Now left leg. Go. Ana. Tu. Set. Net. Go. Ana. Tu. Set. Net. Foot position is important. Go. Ana. Tu. Set. Net. And one more. Go. Ana. Tu. Set. Net. You kind of go up the ladder with that kick. Ana. Tu. Set. Net. Changing your target. Okay, so that's front, back, side. I mean, front, turning inside. Couple variations. You did front push, side push. You can do this on a heavy bag too. You're gonna actually go from your L stance and you're gonna switch, uh, kind of slide in, just like we do with that front push kick. We really emphasize our hip motion. Same with the side push kick, okay? As opposed to a sharp snap of the knee, we're gonna move our body through and push. It's the exact same foot position for the striking tool is still the foot sword. But we're gonna move our body, okay? All right, let's just try that slide mid. Go. Go. Two more, go. Go. Okay, other side. Go. Now what you'll notice on the push, side, uh, side pushing kick, is that you already turn your hips before the kick is, turned, is extended. Okay, or you have a very slight rotation. This is not a piercing kick. It's not a jirugi like with a punch where you rotate. This is more linear to push someone away. And this is a good technique on the heavy bag. Move the bag out of the way or get it swinging the way you want. Okay, pressing kick. Pressing kick is a black belt technique. It occurs in uh, Po Wun and Kwang Gay tech uh, pattern, which is the first, one of the first two, the first two black belt patterns in IKF. And this one is performed in a slightly circular motion, okay, full extension of the leg. And what we're doing is we're pressing down on someone's knee and we're collapsing the side of their knee inward, the way the knee joint doesn't go, or backward, the way the knee joint doesn't go. So if you visualize that motion, as you're doing the pressing kick, you will see that it has to come up and then go down and outward. Kind of comes up and down and outward in a slightly circular motion. Hmm. And down on the angle, you know, that would force that knee joint to have trouble. Okay? So we'll just try a couple of pressing. One, two, bring it up and stomp. Set, stomping at a 45. Net, toss it. Yasa, and you'll notice I re-chamber even this kick. Okay, I'm just, I wanna make sure I practice my kick with all the parts. Chamber, extension, re-chamber, and down. Practice this way, much more correct than this. So you practice all your kicks with few exceptions that way, and you're prepared for consecutive kicking, which we have to do in our pattern, we have to do in self-defense and sparring, so one, other side, two, set, net, gossip, pressing kick, pressing kick, gossip, yoga, yoga, okay? There's another kick, this one's called inward, inward kick. This one is also attacking the knee or the, uh, the waistline of their opponent and the goal is to kind of check them or push their body back or to attack the joint, the knee. So you see what I'm doing is I'm bringing the leg up. <sighs> okay. This one is effective as self-defense. It's of a different line of sight. If I do my side pressing, it's that one. But I can bring my rear leg, get a little bit more range and push. And I'll show the foot position here. 
Toes are out like your twisting kick. <clears throat> Inward. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So let's try this a couple times. Five on both sides. Go. <clears throat> so again, attacking the knees or the waist. <clears throat> Set. Net. You can do this on a heavy bag as well. Toss it. <clears throat> and then I'll try our other side. Hana. Inward kick. Two. Set. Net. Dasa. Very good. All right. Okay, twisting kick. Our right leg, twisting kick. Since we're doing the inward kick position, and I mentioned twisting kick, we might as well look at the twisting kick basic. We do low twisting kick first. Another kick that comes at a strange angle and can be very effective depending on where you're at. In around the corner, the ball of the foot. And so if we do it with the ball of the foot, we can also do it with instep or the point of the toe. There's a couple different tools on the foot we can use. But the harder one is ball of foot, just like turning kick. So we'll practice the ball of foot twisting kick. This kick is also introduced at Quebec, which is the third black belt pattern. So your first three black belt patterns at first dawn you learn pressing kick and twisting kick, uh, both of which are new types of kicking from the basics. So twisting kick comes across like we're cleaning the table with the outside of my leg. If turning kick is cleaning the table with the inside of my leg, twisting kick is cleaning the table with the outside of my leg. Now that hard, is much harder to do because of the angle of where our bodies work. You gotta be able to flexibility. You gotta Bend our knees, bend our standing leg knee. Sometimes people do the twisting kick and come up on the ball of their foot because it helps open their hips up. Uh, some people approach it like in an S shape, like that, so they can do it. Uh, you know, and that can also be a consecutive kick. Boom, boom. You know, twist uh, from turning to twist. So, twisting kick. Basic one, low twisting kick, ball of the foot, like that. Come across, the target is right here in front of me at 90 degrees. Okay? Just like a turning kick ball of foot here, or side turning kick ball of foot. Be that's the target, it's right there facing that way. And I'm gonna kick into their vital points with this kick. And the target typically is a femoral artery or on the inner side of the leg, the groin, Solar plexus, floating rib. These are the targets for the twisting kick. Typically, lower middle. Okay. Now, start our left leg. My left leg is dumb and looks terrible compared to my right leg because Quebec only has a right twisting kick, and I practice that a lot more, which tells you that repetition is important. <laughs> You're not going to get better without doing repetition. So, maybe after Quebec, I should practice. Doing my left twisting kick a little bit more because I don't have quite the flexibility. How do you Maybe work on the flexibility? Yeah. How, how do you work on the that specific flexibility? You got me. Just getting ready to show you. So about three foot up, you have a partner or you have a countertop, something like that. You can put your leg on there. Uh, let's see if you can see that. I've got my toes laying out. I'll turn this a little bit. There's Madonna in the background keeping things real. I've laid my foot there, right, to get this position. And now what I can do is I can push that out, walk it out, and you'll feel this uh, tension in your leg. It's almost like, for me, it kind of pops, like that. And you can just kind of work in that position a little bit and then stretch down your foot, keeping your toes laid out flat the wrong, you know, this opposite direction. The you know, turning kick is here, and the twisting kick is here. So you, this is the best way to work on this stretch. I kind of work in and out like that, and then when I get it extended, which is hard to do, is as I extend, my toes tend to rise, and I want to keep my toes down. You can have a partner hold your toes down. You get extended, and then you stretch down. When you stretch down, you'll feel that tension on your IT band and on the outer thigh. And that's what, now that I've done that, I should be able to do this twist kick a little bit better. <coughs> Not quite. 
<laughs> a little bit better, but it's a little bit better on the left side. So that's that's the, the number one stretch for twisting kick to improve it. You gotta have someone hold it, you know, about your waist level, or you can lay it on a countertop, and then you kind of extend and pull and kind of stretch down with your leg, with your foot laid out. And on my right side, I'm just a lot more flexible. So left is not as good. But we'll do a couple of left sides. Let's do five more. Hana. Oh, no. Boom. And try opening your hips on your standing leg. Try pivoting on your standing foot. Set. Net. Toss it. All right. And I know that uh, I've shown you guys this, but this kick goes low middle and high and middle is the exact same way as you do low except that it's shoulder line but high is different high is essentially you know a flexibility exercise and you're effectively standing here my opponent is to my side with this face right here and i'm going to try to kick over my shoulder and that's the high twisting kick and that kick is actually in the moon move pattern, which is the fourth down pattern for ITF Taekwondo. Over your shoulder. Something like that, right? So you can practice that one too. It's a good flexibility exercise, but you have to visualize. There's my opponent. Okay. Right here. About right here. There's their face. My my face level over my shoulder. And I'm right, popping them in the bit. Okay, so this is a difficult kick to do. We're working on flexibility, but it's also just a good strength exercise. Kind of work on your pulling your leg back over your over your shoulder. High twisting kick, another good one. Okay, uh, hook. Hook kick, hook, not hooking. We'll go to hooking next. But hook, hook kick was originally designed to hook behind the head of your opponent and hit him in the back of the net. So I'm standing here, my, my opponent would hook their leg around my head and hit me in the back of the head like that, pulling forward. So the only way to do that is to extend your leg around and then pull your back of your heel over their shoulder into the back of their head. That is the hook kick. That is the application of the hook kick originally. It has changed, and as we just talked about earlier on the hitting the heavy bag, how it needs to come horizontal. And your side hooking kick, Side hook kick, not hooking. It's horizontal, right through the target. Okay, so I actually hit the target on my extension, and it's hit at a 90 degree versus hit at <laughs> coming back towards me. But I want to show you the original way to do the hooking kick because that trajectory is not often practiced, and you can also practice that on the heavy bag. You can look, loop around the heavy bag and then come back. And it's a good hamstring workout kind of. You can see different angles of attack with the kick with the back of the heel. And so I recommend you try that on the heavy bag. And try this motion a little bit. Again, the hook comes around and back towards you. So try the motion that way a couple of times. Anna, you're effectively going to kick your own glute with your heel. Do. Sit. Then, awesome. okay, and now let's try the downside. Ana, remember you're kicking your own glute. Good. Set. Then, awesome. Yes. There you go. Now, that's the traditional hook kick. But as we talked about, the typical one is we're sparring, and we got somebody here, and we're going to kick to the front of their face if we're in a closed stance, and we're hooking horizontally into the target. When we do breaking with hook kick, we rarely do breaking with the board facing towards us. <laughs> it's typically done with the board 90 degrees. And in fact, in the World Championship, we do reverse turning. So let's do reverse turning as well. Let's do the regular hook kick with... Um, with the uh, turning kick, reverse turning kick, and then the uh, hooking kick. So we'll do all of this. 
So now let's take our rear leg and come all the way around to the front and hook horizontal. The horizontal hook is this one. So our right leg, this is going to be the hook kick to D. Ana. Do. Set. Then, I'm going to do this on the heavy bag as well. Dasa. You're driving the back of your heel into the back. Dasa. Go. 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 Left leg back. Ah. Go. Sit. So now this uh, hook hook kick, you can also hook it around people's guard and you can hook them to the body, get to their kidneys. This kick can be used to hook around their guard to the kidney. You can do it with your lead leg even. Just kind of hook it up huh? with your heel like that. So you kind of just lift it and lift your lead leg, boom. This is pretty effective with people that are coming with their lead leg. Side kick towards you, and you kind of lean out of the way of the kick and hook into their body. And this is most effective when you are in open stance. You got both guys facing the same way. He's coming with his left leg side kick on it. Get out of the way, hook up underneath it, right, and hook to the body. So do you step off to the side slightly? Is that what's happening? You can. Like a, you can. In the dodge, also, I guess. He's kicking you in the body, right? So you can kind of drop your body. So the kick, as you notice, how I'm falling away. I, I, I do, I do fall slightly into the into the angle just to get a better angle at it. But you don't have to. You can go from right here and go. Huh. And what happens is you keep your arm here. Their side kick comes in. And it kind of knocks you back. You've blocked it, but it kind of knocks you back, and then you hook into their body like that. So you okay. can do it on a direct line. You don't have to step off line. But you do that lead leg hook to the body. But you are moving your body away. So you're here, you're here, and you're going, okay. And if you've got enough flexibility, you can put it up in their face too. Huh. The problem is they're if they're side kicking you, their head is back. So usually the target is right here, you know, solar plexus, abdomen. Uh, with that. Okay. So that's the counter, that's a counter hook kick, lead leg hook. You can throw that kick in consecutive motion as well. Front, side turn. Hook high hook, right? There's a consecutive set of kicks we can practice uh, where we're changing the trajectory. We can even do, you know, and this is a good, a good idea, like I told you, mixing circular with linear kicks in a consecutive type of kicking is really effective for sparring. Linear, right? Circular, linear, circular. And I've changed, on all of those, I've changed height and angle, you know, middle front snap kick. High turning kick, middle side kick, high hook kick. And that's all with one leg, boom, boom, boom. So the person sparring you is like, where's the leg? Where's the kick coming from? Oh, it's coming to my body. It's coming. Right. And that's what you want to be able to do. Have control of your leg. So you're kicking all these different angles and trajectories with, with that leg, with that single leg. All right. Uh, reverse turning kick. Reverse turning kick is a rare kick. It's very traditional. And it's not used in sparring very much because it, it takes too long to make it happen. Um, but it's different than reversing and hooking and hook. Reverse hook, I'm trying to you know, kick my butt cheek. Reverse turning, I keep my legs straight and I use my upper body's momentum to, to drop, and that allows my, my leg to swing upward. So from the side, it looks kind of like 
that. And if I do that, um, I, I get to swing my leg like a baseball bat. I don't really, I don't um, bend the knee. Uh, you can slightly bend it as you start, but then you extend and it's pulled through straight and then it bends after it hits. This is reverse turning kick. And um, this kick is used, it's a required kick for power tests. ITF World Championships is one of them. And it is used in pattern, mostly. Uh, sparring, I don't use reverse turning very often, but sometimes it has, a, it has an application. And I think I've showed Mr. Curry this, and he knows this. You drop your body down low, and you kind of bring your legs straight up, and you can hit somebody in the face if they're on top of you. You kind of like, right? Um, the risk with dropping your body that low is that you're right there where someone else's feet is. So you put your face down there, boom, somebody gets to get hit. So beware of that as an option, but it is an option to give you a different angle. Reverse turning kick and pattern looks like this. Yeah. Well, pulls across with your leg. So let's try that a couple times. It's a different feel. Reverse turning kick, right leg back. Uh -huh. So, set. And now we'll go to my dumb side, and it's not as pretty. Uh -huh. Go. Set. All right. So that's reverse turning. And I know the name's a little confusing. Turning kick, all right, we've already gone over. Reverse turning is a straight leg thing. And then hooking kick is the opposite of crescent. So we'll do crescent kick first, right leg back. Crescent kick is a circular kick. That's used as defense. It's a defensive kick. And it's, you bring it out with a knee, chamber the knee, extend and pull across, re-chamber and down. Pull across is about a foot. And down. So it's not a huge, you know, woo, like that. It is a small range. And this is to knock someone's guard down and move their hands out of the way or block a punch or potentially block a kick if you have the range and get some space, say your arms are both, and all you got is your legs, and you can block a kick, potentially with crescent. Uh, crescent kick, we'll try a couple. Right leg back, on up. Left leg, go. Set. Keep your hands up, net. Yasa. Yasa. Go. Good all. Right on. Now, hooking kick is the opposite of that. So the ing afterwards makes the change in the way we say this in English. And we have a block and you'll hook pattern. Hooking block, okay? Where we're, we're blocking, but then we are grabbing, right? Hooking and grabbing someone's fist. And the pattern is hooking, hooking, punch, because I'm grabbing and pulling them into my punch. Uh, we have the hooking kick in Juche pattern, which is a second degree black belt pattern. And the hooking kick comes across and goes outside with the toes leading. We have the crescent toes leading. And by toes leading, I mean my toes are turned in because I'm gonna hook through their guard or knock their guard over, and then hook through toes out. So the hooking kick is like the opposite, uh, the wax on and the wax off of the defensive kicks. And we'll try that. Right leg, switch, it's inside to out, and switch, inside to out, and switch, inside to out, and remember the toes are going through, boom. This is blocking someone's punch. This is pushing their guard out of the way. Could be blocking a kick. Very difficult to do. But after you do that, the likely scenario after you have blocked a punch or you have moved their 
arms out of the way is to attack. So in the Juche tool, it goes one, two. <laughs> so it goes hook, side piercing, you know, two, okay. And so it makes sense to put uh, crescent kicks and hooking kicks as defensive kicks in consecutive kicking sequences where you follow that up with attack. So I would crescent kick block, side kick, body kick, right? Or crescent kick, block the hand, side turning kick with instep to the head. This would be a typical combination. One, two. Okay. Same with hooking. Hooking, outside the end, side turning kick. Okay, so. Both of those are circular motions. Pressing kick, pressing kick, a similarity to pressing kick is a checking kick. The checking kick, we don't extend our knee all the way because we're gonna catch somebody before they've kicked us by hitting them in the body and stopping them. Checking kick can be done here. Front and side, here. If you notice my knee is bent when I make contact. The checking kick doesn't drive through. The kicking kick comes to a point and stops. These are two other defensive kicks. Defensive kicks. They're meant to stop your opponent, stop their body moving forward, right? And they are linear defensive kicks. So just like the attacks, linear and circular attacks, we have circular defenses, right? Those are uh, crescent and hooking. And we have vertical checking, vertical checking. And those and so, which are which are linear. So we have uh, circular and linear defense as well with our legs. And I think this is another part that we don't practice very often is our defensive kicks with our legs. Uh, so make sure you do that. Uh, the last kick I'm going to show you today is waving. Two kicks I'm going to show you. Waving. Sitting stance. It's a good practice of your sitting stance. Bring your leg in, you bring in your reverse foot sword up like you're trying to um, hit your belt knot. Okay, like that. This kick is a good kick to stretch out your IT band for twisting kick. Okay, so you asked me about twisting kick uh, stretches and things you can do. This is a way to kind of dynamically get that leg used to coming up in that position. And so this is also a good kick to work on your flexibility of your hip and your IT band for the twisting kick, right? But, so this kick is upward, so striking upward, like that. Okay. And I will actually twist my hips and throw the kick so that my, my leg comes in front of me and I get a little bit of power in it versus just lifting my leg. It's not just lifting, it's <clears throat> kicking upward. Huh, I can feel that in the outer hip. So this is waving kick. The application is to block a technique that's coming at an angle to you and carry it away. Okay? It's a defensive kick in that regard. Alternatively, if someone tries to sweep your leg, it's getting the leg out of the way. So these are the two applications for waving kick. And then the other last kick I was going to show you is upward kick, which is thrown like this. Now, this is similar to the hook, the original hook, the old comes towards you, this one comes up. So this kick is someone grabs you around the waist and you stand behind you and you put your leg, you put your leg upward kick. Yeah. Again, you're kind of kicking in your glutes. Just kind of come straight up, boom, boom. This is a good defensive kick. We'll practice that one a couple of times. The only kick that we didn't really go over was back kick. There's a bunch of other kicks that we can do, of course. We're running out of time today. The back kick, the only thing I want you to be aware of is that your hip position stays square. 
you don't rotate your standing foot. You just kick straight. Okay? Square, I'm still gonna look over my shoulder, kick it straight to back. That's the back kick. It's like a horse kicking you, bang. The opponent's to the back, but with some distance, they haven't hugged me yet, bang. Then they hug me, and I give them the upward kick, all right? So, back kick, linear, hip square, don't pivot your standing foot. That's the back kick uh, basic. So there's a, a couple of kicks. We can put all those together in, um, in consecutive kicking, certain ones make more sense than others. Certain kicks are linear, certain kicks are circular. Uh, when you put circular and linear kicks together in combination, you have effective combinations often because it's changing the angle of attack against your opponent. If you just do linear, 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 they get used to that and they know that they can sidestep and pivot out of the way. You do circular and linear and circular, circular, and then linear, and then a linear, another one, and you kind of change, change up those uh, types of attacks. Uh, it really uh, uh, confuses your opponent a lot better. Um, and then we have defensive kicks as well. You know, some kicks are more offensive and some are defensive. We didn't go over vertical kick, rising kick. Um, and there's a couple other that are more obscure that uh, we'll pick up on some other time. But today is, it's already 11.15, 11.18. So we've kind of gone overboard a little bit and I don't want to waste all your time today. So, <laughs> Are there any questions about what we went over? Um, do you recommend any like specific, I guess, fighters who you think do a good job of combos? Just to kind of watch, I guess. Cause I feel like I get a lot of the kicks down, but then I don't get the combos when I'm actually there sparring. Yeah. Uh, Pop Rocka. Yeah. She's, uh, you, have you heard of her? I don't think so. Uh, Julia Cross. Um, she's actually given a seminar. Let me see when that seminar is. I posted it Is that it on the Facebook. August 30th one? Uh, I think so. The women's number two super women. I think so. And Anik, the master Van Driesch, I also know, I actually had one of my competitors fight her at the World Cup in Brighton. She won, even though my fighter was very aggressive. <laughs> she, got, she, got, uh, she got beat by a more a skilled opponent. Um, yeah, Julia Cross, Paprocka, and then the, uh, the, guy, the woman from Slovenia. Uh, what is her name? It'll come to me. Solove. Solove. I think it is spelled just like it sounds S O L O V E Y. Paprocka, I think, is uh, Polish, I think, but I don't want to mistakenly say that. She could be from somewhere else. P O P R O C K A. And you probably have to just search on YouTube and find the. Uh, I'm going to stop the recording. See you guys. Um, 